Good morning, traders. Are you guys ready to get back into it? I know I am. I missed out yesterday, but I'm excited to get right back into the trading action. I still got my trades on and uh, they ain't doing too hot with this market coming down. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the market. Will we see continued downside action? Will the correction go from 5% to 10%? All things to be asking. Let's take a look into it right here on live trading, of course. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Those words have been dancing around my head all night. I mean, it's Vegas law, that phrase. Good morning, traders. I'm glad to be back with you guys and going to bring on the boys here. But like always, do us a favor. Get us started with a nice thumbs up. Let's see if we can get to 200 likes before the market open. So I'm calling you guys out there. If you guys enjoy this stream, have been here in the past, let us know. Hit that thumbs up. Let's get it started. Let's bring on my boys, Ryan Faluna in the house. We got Nick Brown. You guys know we'll be able to cover it all here. We'll take a look into the market. We'll take a look into news. If you guys have anything to call out, definitely throw it up in the chat. That's what we're here for. And one thing that I'll be saying, and just kind of side note is, did you guys hear about this uh, new vehicle that's coming out? Um, the, the new kind of EV? Did you guys hear about that? This seems like nope. a setup. Did no, I miss it something? is. V VFS is going to start oh, trading. Yes. VinFast. Yeah, yeah that, that, was, that was one of the stock du jour yesterday. Uh, I actually mm -hmm. didn't trade that, Mitch. I was I, I was lost without your ability to chart it. I know, man. Don't worry. I was lost too. Um, but the only thing that I could say is uh, I'll be watching this one a little bit today. We'll see what happens, right? It did move fast. And I mean... This, this is from a D spec, so just be careful out there, right? We'll see what happens on this one if it's able to keep going. Or maybe it can get some other stocks to move. But I see you guys in the chat. You guys were all over it. You guys were ready. We'll keep an eye on it. BSAQ, SS Trades even knows where it came from. That's what I love to hear. The chat's all over this, and I'm sure that you will be taking a look into it. Of course, I still have Penn Gaming. We can talk a little bit about that. I might get stopped out today, right, guys? I'm not going to let this go in the red for me. As much as I want this trade to go in the green, there's one thing that I always tell myself. Wanting a trade to go in the green is not going to get it to go in the green, Mitch. So uh, even if you had the best timing and you think you're going to get it right, sometimes you're just not going to. But one thing I won't do is fight the market because if the market's coming down and going to continue coming down, I'm willing to get out and always get back in. That's one thing that I think a lot of traders sometimes suffer with. They say, well, my mentality was that Penn was going up now, so I have to stay in it. No, not necessarily. Like always, we can always get out of our decisions and get back into those decisions. I think that's an important outlook. We'll see if I do just that on Penn today. All right, let's get to the other action in the market. We can take a look at the S&P 500. We can take a look at the SPY. We can take a look at some news catalysts. If you guys have anything you guys want to call out, definitely throw it up in the chat. I'm going to go to my man Ryan's chart in just a second here as my boy puts it up. Oh. Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I, 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 you, know, I, you know what's funny about this is that I was like, oh, Mitch is going to be back today. I don't really have to worry about screwing up. And then two minutes in the show, I've already forgot to put my charts up and screwed up. So, uh, hey, GG, no worries. I got no you, re, my as the kids say. <laughs> uh, we're going to start off here with, uh, with uh, just kind of an earnings preview. I'm assuming hint hint nick is going to go over kava from last night as well as tjx target and maybe even jd from this morning those are their earnings reports target and uh, tjx popping here a little bit uh, i gotta say i think target reverses maybe it doesn't go uh red but it reverses here and yeah i saw that comment too ss trades that's what i want to hear man that's what i want to hear same with me <laughs> same SS trade in the chat saying that me. most of his info comes from benzinga pro and of course where could you guys get benzinga pro of course well just pro.benzinga.com. Go get your two-week trial. What are you waiting for? If you guys haven't tried this out, you don't even need a credit card. In fact, on one of our one of our need employees, a credit card? Listen, listen to this, Mitch. Funny story about that. One of our – Dennis. Dennis yeah. was like, hey, uh, someone in my family actually wants to try out Pro. Uh, can you help him? And I was like, yeah, he just needs to go to this link. And he's like, but he doesn't have a credit card. And I was like, he doesn't need one. And Dennis like, really? 
I'm yeah. Like, yeah, that's Where how else? awesome we are. You don't even need a credit card. So yeah. Uh, okay. really awesome. Check go it check out it today, out. Today, guys. I'll throw up the link in the chat. We'll go Sick. back to the chart here. Okay. Uh, first thing we're going to take a look at spy. Uh, so remember, one of the things we've been talking about the past couple of days is that the spy did bounce off the convergence of the 50 day moving average, as well as the 444 support level that was previous resistance. That bounce lasted one day. And the very next day we reversed and took out the bottom side of that candle. We now have two closes below this convergence uh, support point. That's great. We get one more that solidifies it now as new resistance. And I would imagine we'd keep going down. So uh, for the SPY here, again, my overall target is going to be this purple shaded area. Uh, I think we might get some support here at 438 and also 431. So keep that in mind. Um, we'll see where this ends up going. I think it's going to end up in here. One of the things we do have today are Fed meeting minutes. So we'll see if that has uh, any effect on the market. Now let's go ahead and check out some of the movers and check out some of the things that we can potentially trade here today. Now, um, first stock here is going to be DLO. This is D Local Limited. Uh, they reported earnings last night, popping here uh, this morning, up quite a bit. Uh, we also had Susquehanna maintaining a positive rating and raising the price target to 24. Um, sorry, I uh, got distracted there. In fact, let me stop those distractions uh, because that one was actually pretty good. I'll go, I'll go give him props on that later. Um, okay, uh, DLO popping here. We did go as high as 21. Now we're sitting right around the VWAP. This is right around this round $20 number. So let's see what happens as the stock moves to and below that $20 level. We've seen those round numbers really act as as you know, levels that the stock can actually trade off of. So we'll see if that holds up here. Keep in mind, VWAP really, really close to that. Uh, next, we have Octo. This is um, eight co holdings. Now we've traded this here before. This one already popping and retracing most of its move. We did get as high as 145. I didn't see any news in here. Ah, never mind. Um, they released a PR here highlighting recent accomplishments and key milestones. So one of the things we should probably do is go through this uh, while Nick's talking or while we, I've got some time when Mitch's screen is up. Maybe I'll go ahead and do that. Nonetheless, we've seen Octo on the relative volume scanner. This is one of those small caps that we've traded here before. Uh, if we take a look at the chart here, it looks pretty terrible. And one of the other things that we notice in some of the recent performance is that when it does pop, it drops. So this is going to definitely be one of those stocks where, look, if you get your gains, don't be afraid to take them. If you take gains and stock goes higher, don't worry. It's likely going to come back that same day or perhaps even the next day. So try not to worry about that. This one definitely on the docket. We'll see if we can actually get a VWAP reclaim here and a move higher. Target, uh, one of those stocks that reported earnings, they reported better than expected earnings. Target popped here. I'm going to wait and have Nick cover it. Target is bleeding some of this back. Uh, again, I don't know that it's going to really stay up here. Maybe that's just my own personal bias. I don't really know. Uh, but yeah, uh, I like this. I was going to say, Ryan, some of the comments that the CEO are making, it's just unbelievable about this theft rate. And we're going to get into that when we go over target earnings. Okay, perfect. I was trying not to steal your thunder, but I appreciate that because again, I'm not, I'm not sure this one's going to break and go higher. Uh, anyway, um, the Yang, the uh, Chinese ETFs, Yang and Ying, uh, likely to be in play. We're hearing more news out of China about all the bad stuff that's going on there from natural disasters to the fiscal disasters and, and everything in between. Uh, so watch these. These often will be decent trading vehicles. They're liquid enough to get in and out of. They're levered 3x, so you do get some pretty good movement on them. I have no position in these. I don't often trade these, but a group from the happy hour trades these pretty regularly, so I often stay on top of it. I uh, see the bear one here popping today, obviously. Uh, a couple more things that I want to cover here before I turn this over to Nick. Uh, Coinbase is actually up this morning. Now, what's interesting is that... Um, there's a PR here. Coinbase shares are trading higher following reports suggesting the company got an NFA approval to offer crypto futures. Uh, so with all of the turmoil going on in Coinbase, this looks like this is popping higher. One of the things I would like for a potential day trade on Coinbase today is a move through 84, perhaps taking out that pre-market high and maybe going to 85, 86. We'll see. That would be a pretty decent trade. And you should be able to capture that with options if you so desire. Um, it's always going to be worth mentioning. AMC really kind of holding. It had a 
nice move up yesterday. Right out of the open, we dropped. Buyer stepped in, it moved up, and then we held that here. So getting a little bit weak in the pre-market, we're right at the VWAP. I'm not going to trade AMC, but I know a lot of you folks trade AMC. This one might be in play today, so keep that on your radar as well. Uh, DCTH, this is Delcath Systems. This uh, this was a frustrating one. This stopped me out yesterday, and, and it, let's actually review this real quick. Remember, one of the things that I was waiting for here was a big move through six. I actually tried trading it a little bit earlier when it sold off. It stopped me out. I said, eh, okay. When it came back here, I tried it again. It couldn't break through six. I said, you know what? This thing doesn't have the strength. I'm going to move away from it. Sold it. Uh, took two paper cuts there. Really not upset about how much money was lost in those two trades. They were very, very small losses. What I was upset is that this really just stuck around above the VWAP. We got the volume pop we were looking for. Bang, this thing gave us a great trade in the second half of the day. So I missed that one. Uh, just poor execution on my part. The target was still correct and the levels were still correct. I simply just didn't execute the way that I should. Um, we are higher here in the pre-market by a little bit. We were actually up off the lows. So let's see if this actually gets rear end to go today. Uh, 580, definitely going to be my near-term spot if it can take that out. And then one more thing we're going to take a look at is NVIDIA. So NVIDIA, uh, you know, back and forth day yesterday, really is kind of holding the gains. We've got earnings coming up next week on Wednesday after the market closes. Remember, I started to layer into a short here via NVDS. We'll see uh, how this ends up going. I watch NVIDIA every day because of that position now. Nick, that's all I got. I'm going to drive here for you. What stock do you want me to take a look at first, my man? I was going to say, we can just start off with earnings from Kava. If you could throw up a chart of Kava, they reported their earnings as the first publicly traded company. EPS came in at 21 cents. Estimates for a loss of 3 cents. Revenue, 172.89 million. Estimates for 163.2 million. So better than expected there. They say they, they see same restaurant sales growth, 13 to 15 percent, uh, and the stock is trading higher. A uh, last check for all the uh, better than expected marks. So we'll see if this is just the first start for uh, Kava. If you want to put up JD.com, they reported earnings um, this morning. Uh, EPS came in at about 74 cents. Estimates for 66 cents. Revenue, 39.71 billion. Estimates for 37, uh, 38.71 billion. They surpass expectations, but shares are trading lower. Uh, you know, just we've seen a lot of this headwind, probably just because of all of the 13F filings. We know that Michael Burry is out of JD.com and he had a stake in it. So that could be some weakness there. Um, if you wanted to, were there any other earnings besides Target you wanted me to cover? Yeah, TJX, Target, and you already did Kava and JD. Yeah. All right. I was going to say, if you could uh, throw up a chart at TJX, they reported yep. earnings this morning. Uh, EPS came in at 85 cents. Estimates for 77 cents. Uh, revenue came in at 12.76 billion. Estimates for 12.45 billion. They uh, raised their full year 24 outlook, uh, raising the guidance for Q3. Uh, for Q2, they did see uh, inventory at the end of Q2 6.6 billion versus the 7.1 billion last year. So let's get to the guidance. They see Q3 overall comparable store sales up three to four percent. They see Q3 adjusted. Uh, EPS to 95 cents to 98 cents, estimates for 97 cents. They raised their full year 24 outlook. They see adjusted EPS of $3.56 uh, to $3.62 from $3.39 to $3.48. Prior for the estimate was $3.59. Comparable store sales, they see up 3%. Uh, overall for Q4, they see comparable sales, stores up 3 to 4%. They see Q4 EPS a dollar. A dollar to a dollar three cents uh, versus the a dollar nine expectation. So again, solid beat there. They're raising the full year guidance, and that stock is moving higher. Now, Target is a different story because that stock is higher. If you could throw up a chart at Target, that'd be great. TGT. They reported earnings, but there's some comments, and there's a lot of comments regarding this. So let's just get to it. Just at EPS came in at a dollar eighty. Estimates for a dollar forty. Revenue did miss expectations, $24.77 billion. Estimates for $24.91 billion. Q2 comp sales down minus 5.4%. Estimates for down 3.5%. Um, they cut the guidance after Q2 sales shortfall. They see Q3 adjusted EPS $1.20 to $1.60. Estimates for $1.83. They see full year adjusted EPS $7 to $8. Saw $7.75 to 875. Now, what is going on with the stock? We um, on the conference call, 
Um, in the release, I should say, let's just start with that. In the release, uh, CEO Brian Cornell said, quote, negative reaction to Target's pride collection had a material impact on sales. But he defended the company's response and said after Target removed some items in June out of concern for employee and customer safety. He says, quote, it saw, quote, some things normalize, end quote. He also said it will continue to have a collection for Pride Month and other heritage months. Now, on the call, he said during the first five months of this year's uh, this year, stores, uh, their store saw a 120% increase in thefts incidents involving violence or threats of violence. He says the team continues to face a, quote, unacceptable uh, amount of retail theft and organized retail crime. Now, another executive on the call said the reaction to Pride Assortment is a signal for them to pause, adapt, and learn. The CFO on the call says June comp sales fell 7%. And July is now down 5%. Target CFO continues on the call saying that they're seeing lower inflation in food and essentials. Uh, they also say their first 10 days of August, they are very pleased with their results. And the Target uh, executive continues on the call going on to say in Q4, wait, they expect a small amount of year-over-year -year favorable uh, favorability from shrink. This is a large developing story. Some analysts have already put out some notes, uh, early reactions. Still going through those, Ryan, trying to uh, see what they're nailing down. Uh, we'll probably have a complete update either on Twitter, on my Twitter page as I continue to tweet out the, the notes, and probably we'll have an update here. But this target story, uh, very interesting to see all these different uh, metrics regarding theft. I don't know if you have any comment regarding the 120% increase. That That's alarming. Uh, we talked a little bit about it before. Uh, it's completely unacceptable. It needs to change. And the people that are responsible are people in a position of power that are opting not to prosecute and not to uh, stop these people. So until that changes, we're going to keep seeing this. Um, I, I don't really have any other comment. I really don't want this to go into like a political debate or anything like that. But uh, just make sure you vote, folks. Okay, I was gonna um, say, if you can throw up a chart of Tesla, uh, they have reduced the prices for its premium Model S and Model X vehicles in China. Again, this is the second price uh, cut uh, this week. Multiple media outlets uh, reported Wednesday. Uh, CNBC reported it. We reported it here at Benzinga and citing the company. Uh, we talked about this yesterday. This just goes to show the supply and demand, that there's a lot of supply on the table, just not a lot, or there's a lot of demand and supply on the table. It's just the demand is there, but nobody really wants it because the prices are too high. And we talked about this yesterday, how a normal average American, even here in the U.S., uh, can just not afford one of these 40, 50, 60,000 vehicles uh, for the prices. So these prices are going to have to continue to come down. If you could throw up a chart of maybe the S&P 500 or something regarding Russia, foreign currency or something, According to the Financial Times, President Vladimir Putin is, is going to discuss ramping up currency controls with Russian policymakers on Wednesday after an extraordinary 3.5 percentage point rate rise fell to halt the ruble slide, said two people familiar with the matter. Putin will hear proposals from Russia's finance ministry to require exporters to convert some of their foreign currency earnings, most of which are currently held abroad into rubles, the people said. So this is going to have to watch this. Uh, you know, given everything that has happened over in Russia, them invading Ukraine, I'm still surprised Russia's leader is still in power. We know that he's very stressed, that he's very tired. So we're going to have to see how long, how much longer um, Mr. Putin can uh, to reign out. And it's also going to be very interesting to see if him and um, President Joe Biden come into some kind of agreement, some kind to talk. Uh, we know Ukraine um, with the, the the peacemaker Saudi Arabia is trying to do something along that, be the host of it. So we're going to have to watch this and see. If you could throw up a chart of GM, General Motors, we got some news this morning that General Motors announced today it's leading a 60 million Series B funding round in Mitra, in Mitra Chem, a startup described as a, quote, AI-enabled battery materials innovator. That's according to Electric. The fresh funding is intended to enable uh, Mitra Chem to scale its current operations in Mountain View, California, and help speed up the entry of, it, of the startup's battery materials form, uh, formulation into the market. And if you could throw up a chart of, uh, lastly, if you could throw up a chart of GM, uh, Stellantis, and Ford, 
uh, quote, we're done taking their crap and the scraps they want to feed us, end quote. That's what UAW President uh, Sean Fain in a Facebook meeting with members on Tuesday said. I what a great these quote. Guys. <laughs> what I a love great these quote, guys. man. I love it. <laughs> I love these guys, yo. yeah. I love these. He says that um, the United Auto uh, Workers me uh, members have until August 24th to vote to authorize strikes at the Detroit Three Automakers if they don't have a new contract deal in hand by the time the current agreement expires in about 30 days, the union said on uh, Tuesday. So we're going to have to watch that. They're not taking any crap. I believe it was last week there was a live stream of, of Mr. Fain or, um, on Twitter or on X. And he had a piece of paper or Stellantis's agreement, and he crumbled it up and threw it in the garbage. The only thing I'll correct you on that, Nick, is that uh, I think Zuckerberg would be very pissed off because it was on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> yes, on now. <laughs> I got you. You know how that goes. You know how that goes. Right on now, the battle of X and, and, and Meta, what, what platform was he on? Yeah. But did you see they are starting to roll out, Ryan, uh, TweetDeck Premium? You're going to have to pay for TweetDeck if you're not already paying. Mm. Already paying. Already paying. I'm already paying just MBD. because the longer tweets are helping. MBD. <laughs> I, I, I don't use it that often, so I, I think uh, I'll just stick to the regular one, but that just probably – You're me. missing out, Mitch. It's a very powerful tool, and I encourage you to use TweetDeck. I guess you got to teach me how, Nick, right? Like like always, right? We got to learn from each other, man. And maybe I got to learn in, that from you. you, you know what we should we'll do, do, I'll do the just, show from your house. We should just do a webinar. You can always come in, Nick. The house is we open, should, man. A webinar, that would even be cool. We should, we should just do, we should put together a quick webinar on some of the, you know, like best practices for Twitter or whatever. Yeah, I could share some AI tools and, and things like that I've been using AI for. I've sure. been teaching how Nick had been do things like that and teach retail traders to do things like that, right? Man, you guys, we all need to be what? Self-sufficient. Be able yes. to rely on our own skills, our own abilities to do everything for us. Because the truth is, nobody's going to do it for us, man. We got to do it ourselves. Let's get right ready for this market open. It's 928. What are you guys, th what are you guys feeling today? Um, any, any thoughts on uh, tech overall? The fourth thing, I mean, just watch pre-market prep because I've been talking about this for a month. While Kramer just talked about this yesterday, but we won't get into that action. Uh, let's keep looking into the stocks today to be kind of watching out for. Of course, NVIDIA is going to be on the watch. NVIDIA, yesterday I talked about it on pre-market prep. Be careful shorting NVIDIA before 450s because that could easily rip your face off. Yesterday we went to 453s right back down through it though. Um, so now I'm going to be watching. Does this kind of hold? Because Look at this. I extended this from yesterday, right? And this is looking like it wants to actually make an up move today. So I know that a lot of times the market likes to do the, the opposite, right? Well, look at the reaction you're getting right now in NVIDIA. This actually makes me lean bullish today. It's crazy to think so. But yeah, I'm already on that side a little bit. But like always, I'm not going to go too crazy. What I'll use is like something that I've been using for constant. The last couple of days, last couple of weeks, I've been looking to see if Microsoft can go green. We see Microsoft above 9 EMA, 324s. That starts to tell me that we could get that nice up action move. It would be, have to be a big break on Microsoft. There's the bell, guys. You guys call out stocks in the chat. I'll call out sectors and industries. We'll keep taking a look at what's going on in the market. I need to look at Penn right out the gates here to see if I get out. But I'll let you guys know what happens there. Kicking it to my man, Ryan. You guys know he'll be looking at some of those smaller names. So if you got a smaller name moving around, please let us know in the chat and we'll keep going after them. Uh, just kind of watching Octo here. Also new, new going lower here, new gapping up on earnings, but uh, big pull here on new. NVIDIA, nice little pop right before the gates. It's pulling back now. We'll see if it holds VWAP. Moo moo. Took some new here. At least I have the stop set, but let's see what happens here on the pen dragon. And I had it up like about a buck. Probably should have just taken the buck. I've had it like multiple times, but definitely got to be careful with it today.
All right, Penn has already made a move down there. And so if I think it could be a bullish day, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it right now off that low of the day. 2390s is the low of the day right now. So I'm going to go ahead and set a stop there at 23. Took new off. 2388s or 89 will be the trigger price. And then 88 get me out. 84s will get me out. So I'll just make sure I stop out what in, in uh, break even. So now it's just going to be either profits or break even trade. I'm okay with that. I love doing those types of trades to tell you the truth, because the truth is, is that we're in the game to make business. We're in the, the business to make business. money. <laughs> we're in the business to make money. And I think the important part sometimes is just understanding that, Hey, if I don't lose on this position, I at least gave myself the chance to get the bigger move above the 24s. Octo maybe moving higher here. Grab some at 126. All right, now I'm going to be able to balance out and start focusing on different positions. One that I'm focusing on is also Gilead. I got to go ahead and set the stop on that. Make sure that I don't get cut out on it today. Uh, but understanding where I need to get out, which is below the 75 spot now. So I have 79, 73s to get out on Gilead if that goes through it. Always, I uh, focus on swings first. What do you got, uh, Ryan? Octo, uh, Octo, as it came back. Uh, we're getting a lot of fake out moves here on a couple of these, and one of the things that I'm I'm going to try to do today is make sure that I don't get caught, and then hoping for a bounce. Uh, that's actually hit me the past couple of days, so I'm going to be a little bit more um, quick on the trigger, if you will. Mm -hmm. I'm calling being ID AI. slow on the trigger, <laughs> and that's, 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 that's the fun part. IDAI and Rigetti uh, looks like they're moving again. IDAI at the highs here really needs volume. R Let's check Rigetti. Yeah. Rigetti's really been good. Oh, man, Rigetti, big move here out of the gate. We'll see if this keeps going here. No position in Rigetti, at least not today. Or not, not yet today, I should say. I like the – it's kind of like a rounding bottom, big rounding bottom, and then kind of like a cup and handle, but it's not a pretty one there on Rigetti as like kind of I see it. So you see how this kind of rounding bottom action? Oh, then I see the rounding the, bottom, Mitch. You bet your, you bet your uh, bottom. Yeah, you, you bet that rear. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as you can see, what, what I like to do is when stocks do this and start to take off, come back to me. And that's exactly what it did. It went back to 165. Now it's trying to hold $2 pullbacks recently. And then just recently you broke through that $2. Yesterday you go to 212. Today you don't even go near that 219. Let's see if this takes 250. I think that's the level you got to be looking for right now for Rigetti to really take off. Let's see if it goes to, and pushes through. One thing that I would call out on the 15 minute support is you can see it. 220 is playing as support there. Now 246 as quick as that. 250s are looking good here on on I would like for it to get to 250 really quickly then do a little quick pullback for me then I'm looking to get in on that pullback that's what I'd be watching for maybe 237s 240s on um, pullbacks it's already there at 247 we'll see if it takes to 250 uh octo going higher here out out of that so octo that was a really quick one here didn't get a whole lot we'll see if this sets up remember what I said about octo likes to pop and drop so wouldn't be surprised if it came back in all right, just to talk about the sectors that I always like to talk about, right? And I always pay attention, not overall. Overall can trick you really easily. Look at this, guys. Every sector from the open, red from the open. And I think that's important to note, right? Let's see if we get red to green moves. What gets into the green is going to be very important. That usually ends up leading for the day. It's happened before with technology earlier this week on Monday. Let's see if technology goes from down 0.87 at the open to back into the green. So this is what I'll be looking for. I'll let you guys know if I see it. Octo, Going good trade deep. here. Good trade here out of the gate. Octo went up to 143 is the high spot. Uh, coming back off that high now, back down to 130. Again, it, this is moving fast. So like I said earlier, we were able to deduce this by watching this before. Stock is volatile. When you get the gains, take them. It's likely going to come back in and give you another chance to reload. Yeah, spike in uh, sound, and that's also causing, I think, AI to get even a little bit of a look here. Through 32s, it already looking like it's getting a little bit of a bounce there. And I don't, if I would go after AI and sound those names today, I would definitely be on just pure day trade momentum, but yep. we'll see what happens. NVIDIA has already pulled back to this 442. Remember, this kind of did a little bit of a ripoff right before the gates there. So what I'll be looking for is just to hold 440s on any pullback. Really should kind of hold around this 442 spot if we're going to continue the trend right back up to 448. But 
definitely on the 440 breakdown that's where i could see the little continuation towards 438s it's already doing that right now as we speak nvidia quick little pullback there yeah, and i remember i'm in still in nvds in fact i added yesterday i'd like nvidia to keep coming in this is good for me by the way dlo breaking the after hours high yesterday so let's see if there's more mo in dlo as it continues to trade here today, Octo still holding above that VWAP at 132 and that 130 spot that it took out on volume. So that's pretty good. All right, guys, I'm going to be looking for Microsoft to see if it can go green here. It's already starting to recover. And remember, I talked about that as a good indicator for me to see the market come back and look at the green bar there in Microsoft. That's actually pretty strong there. I'm thinking about playing this today for the a little bit of a reversal upside action. And this would have to go off the hourly 320.50 area. I have to hold it really tight because this is a downtrend. I'd be going against the trend. Whenever I go against the trend, what do I want to do? I want to make sure that I'm holding towards support and not letting that break support. 320s, 50s, 320, 40 area seems like a nice little area to risk off of today and look for this to go back to 324s. That's my outlook right now. We'll see what happens. IDAI going higher here. Great callbacks. It looks like Sid was on that too. Sydney, excuse me. Um, look at this moving high. 287, the spot there that it hit. There is some size there. We'll see if that takes it out. Yeah, uh, Nick, that VFC saw that. Um, opted not to buy that because it's already extended, and I felt like I was chasing. That's from a trader perspective. But you should go over the information in that note for sure. Yeah, I was going to say I'm trying to find that note, and we'll have more once I get it. All right, looking for SoxL in the Moomoo account, and I'm going to try to get some here. Just such a little amount that I can get, but I'll just try to do it for a little bit of a longer term swing trade. So I'm going to try to already get in here at the 50 spot, 2150s. Uh, 287, clearly the spot on IDAI. This is one of those situations where I can't get enough shares because I'm in pen also in that small account. So I'm not going to go for the Sox L. I'll go for it in a different way. Um, but I do like that Sox L pullback off the 2143's hourly look here. Look at this hourly look. Nice little pullback towards the support. Next layer down through that 43s is towards 34s. So that could have been the risk right now. And it's already getting that bounce back. Looking to see if the spy goes green to the upside. Nice. Look at that. Look at that. Where every sector is down and the spy is doing that, that's reversal for me. I've been looking for this one because people get to this point where they just immediately get bearish. That's why I'm going to look to see if NVIDIA can get back up here. Microsoft is a big uh, indicator for me to see this upside action. So pullbacks at 30, 320, 90s right now. I don't mind taking a swing trade on Microsoft here. If I could just get a little bit of a pullback here. I'm, I'm even thinking about chasing here. IDA, a little bit of a pullback to the VWAP, which would be good. I'm going to try to add on the VWAP at 276. They're loading there. On Here comes some more sellers. Trying to be patient here on Microsoft, but I definitely want this nice little pullback here to come back here. And then I'll take a little bit of a shot there off the bottoming action on Microsoft today. Just got stopped out on an FAZ, Marty. is talking about that. And I feel like this market's playing a little bit of trick a lot of, on traders. It goes a lot of the times on the opposite psychology. So I'm going to be looking for Microsoft to now get a little bit more pullback. But, man, I'm getting antsy trying to buy it already. Yeah, I'm going to buy it. I'm, I'm going to take at least a, a starter position. I just took the starter position in the, in the swing trade account, the start swing trade account. So there, I, I already got a Gilead today. So that's a loser. We'll, we'll let you guys know about Gilead being a loser today. But I am going after Microsoft there. It took a little bit there at 321.34s. Really want to kind of add back here towards 320.80s on the five-minute VWAP bounce attempt. Uh, but if it just takes off here, I want to be a part of this one because I think it could reverse pretty to the upside and i'm going to be watching nvidia a little later to see if that goes into the green that could be a little bit of an opposite reaction today right and so we we don't know right now apple's a good indicator to kind of look to see what happens in the market that's a nice little bounce back it went really red right close to that daily support and daily support on this is really strong right now in apple um so i feel like this is also a level that i could risk off of look how strong this level is holding here on apple 
This is a daily chart, not a not an hourly chart. This is a daily chart. The institutionals are seeing this. I think institutionals are playing off that 177 on Apple. That's what the way I feel. That's when I see this type of action, that's what I would say. And Apple supposed to have released their iPhone, right? When do they release their iPhone? Can you find I, that out, Nick? I think it's September, September, isn't it? Can you can you find out the exact date for me? No, no need to like know at this second, but just can you find that out for me? This is what it's about. This is this is asking Nick some edge potential questions. And you guys in the chat do the same as I'm doing now. That's what I love having Nick here for. That's even better than just reporting the news for us. That's actually digging. Mid September, says Robert. Yeah, I, I would love to. I would love to see Apple get right back to two hundreds before that, right? And so, who knows, man? Who knows? There's one thing I've stopped doing so much is stop betting against Apple so much. <laughs> and even though I don't like the stock that much, but I'll tell you one thing: I flipped my outlook on that. Nice little first Apple uh, candle here. Microsoft starting to go right back up. Never got to that pullback for me to add. I can step up to the plate and add right here. I might just take the 32, uh, 321.50s, risk off of 321s here just to start. September 12th is your iPhone release date. Looking for a little pullback close to that 50 now to go ahead and get in here. That 74 on the offer, 59s. Oh, if I had that there. Octo is not halted. I see it trading. Did it halt already? Did I miss it? No, Octo is not halted. Just added there on Microsoft. It is going higher. Adding on Microsoft there. So So I just added. No, you're good. Go ahead, Ryan. I was just going to say, here's the the huge move. This is the idea. I'm not in it for this move. I was in it for a a bit of a smaller move, but that's okay. Remember, um, one of the things we found out is that when this thing pops, it does like to pull back in. So if you get gains in any of this here, definitely take them. Uh, this stock is likely to be in play for a, a large portion of today. Octo. Thinking about taking a swing trade, even as I am. Yeah, I, I'm not feeling the biggest bullish position, but I could play the day trade on the TQQQ here. This looks interesting as it just popped above 39s, just pulled back to 39s and then pushed right back up. That's the type of strategy that I really like here. So you see the TQQ go up there, pull back to the VWAP. Now I know where I could risk off of, like maybe right here on this 38.92 or 38.90s. Looking for the move back above the 39s. We'll see. Do we get reversal action today? Um, I'm just going to be watching the big boys to see what happens with them. Amazon's getting hit a little bit. Google is coming back up there. What's up with Tesla today? Mm, Tesla actually getting a little bit of a bounce there. That might actually help that uh, IPO stock. Uh, well, the SPAC. VFS? The SPAC. Yeah. That might actually help. If Tesla can go up today, I think that helps VFS doesn't hurt it and it's going red to green right now off of a support there oh do i dare go after this stock today that'd be asking for something but (laughs) we'll see what happens there i never play ipos that that well um or even d specs to to say that uh off to 25 seems interesting for me today but it's already at 27 so you got to be real careful with this stock it's moving fast What are you going to do, Microsoft? Regarding the Apple iPhone, Mitch, uh, regarding the 15, that's not really going to be showing in Q3, in my opinion. That's really going to be showing in Q4 because of Christmas. Uh, When they report earnings, uh, Apple should be giving some kind of insight into what the Christmas quarter should look like just because uh, we've had a lot of supply and demand issues. We've had a lot of wait time issues. So anything that they say should probably be reflected positively should for Christmas. If not, I don't think the stock's going to move anywhere. Interesting to see all sectors still red from the open. I don't see this often, guys, with a with the market actually making an up move like this. Um, so just calling out something that's different today than a norm, right? I'm not I don't really know where that gives us edge. And that's because it's un it's an unnatural, like an unnormal situation here where you're seeing all the sectors red from the open. Yet the spy making a lift like this. Ryan, do you see things happen like this? I don't see no, things happen like this often. Not often. 
uh, there's usually like one sector that's just keeping us up or something like that. But, but it's usually not. easy to identify. I mean, there's something keeping us up, but it's not as not as, not as easy blatant. to identify. Yeah. So what does that show? That shows that the rotation's all around. And so wherever it is, you don't, you don't know exactly it's where it's going. And that's what I try to catch a lot of the times is rotation. Where's the rotation going to? And this is what I talk a lot on start swing trade. That's, that's main focus of start swing trade is where's the rotation going? Because if we can catch that, we can make pretty good calls. All right, looking at the SPY to see what's leading. VFC is, of course, leading there in the SPY. And uh, we'll see what happens on that. NWS, um, looking at SEDGs up. Love. So airlines getting a little lift today. Hmm. Airlines? Yeah, airlines. I'm seeing that trend right there. American Airlines is getting a nice little push off that 1550 area multiple times has just been hanging out here. Is now the time to go after American Airlines? I might take a little bit of a shot on that. I really don't got too big of a problem with American Airlines. I think this can come back. So what's going on with the cruise lines? Those are still coming back down, I feel like. They'll still have a little ways. There's Microsoft. Nice little lift off here on Microsoft. I look to the right and I'm like, ooh, that's what I wanted to see. It didn't even come back to the 32090s. Now starting to lift. Let's see if NVIDIA does that really strong trap move right back up here. There it is. It's starting to get going there. We'll see if it gets back up there to 446. 446 big bar up is what I would be a little bit weary of if NVIDIA starts really to push here. And that's just going to tell me that tech is coming back here. To look at stocks like AMD to maybe make a bottom here and come right back up. So I'm looking for a lag effect maybe off of AMD. That doesn't look too bad. Micron as of late hasn't been a bad play. Oracle was pretty strong yesterday. Can it continue the strength here if, if uh, the Qs go into the green? That's one thing that I'd actually be looking for. Oracle has been strong. Yeah, nice little pullback here to 117. Let's see if it takes out the 117.70 on the upside. Yesterday was pretty strong stock. Uh, DCTH, watch for another attempt at moving through six on DCTH. Octo back to its VWAP, IDAI flirting with uh, with the level it was consolidating at. DCTH, oh, here we go. Maybe this is it on DCTH. Let's go, Microsoft. That boy trying to call a turn. I said I was going to wait for it. You, you savage, Mitch. You couldn't wait for it. I tried to call the turn there on Microsoft. Look at that nice little candle. 324s. Big DCTH. level for me to see. DCTH at 6. Let's see if it goes through on 6. Just took 599. There was a lot of stock there on DCTH. Ooh, ooh. See if we pop above. Come on. Take got. the 6 what out. Got, take baby. the 6 out. My price here is 592. Not going to let that go red on me. Just FYI. All right, guys, smash the like out there. If you guys are enjoying the trading action right here, live trading with Benzinga, you guys know where you're at. Hit it up. Let me see those 200 likes. Come on, guys. If not, we're going to have to get out. down here. Stopped out of DCTH. We'll wait for this to try again. That six level, clearly the spot. We've been rejected there twice here today. All right. Well, I'll be looking for Microsoft to continue climbing higher. Will we get the cues to go ahead and just kind of give this a nice little rip to the upside today? I'm looking for it now. Tesla's making a nice little move. That's looking good. Some uh, I'm seeing some healthcare names. GEHC. Will GE make the up move off the channel? No, it won't. Oh, good Lord. We're going to talk about this later today on Start Swing Trade. We've been talking about how you could have traded GE from the top of the bottom of this range. Nine times this year. Brian. Nine times for all you Ferris Bueller's fans. Nine. Just had to. Uh, but yeah, honestly, I mean, that's crazy, dude. The algos have just been throwing this left and right. They're just literally throwing it to each other and just making money. This is how the algos make money and we just sit and watch when it's an easy ass trend to read sometimes. It's crazy. We sometimes avoid trends that continue to climb. Like GE, I've I've heard so many people avoid this trade this year. But look at this. This is, the, <laughs> if not the <laughs> best is, stock of the year. I mean, that is a ridiculous trend, bro. <laughs> that is absolutely ridiculous, insane. bro. And this is on the daily. It's not like I mean, 
it's insane, not one but... minute. Yeah, it's not a one minute chart. <laughs> Even even when it gets to the top, it's a, it's ridiculous how it turns around. Like, look at this when it got good earnings. It's right at the top of the channel. You think like, okay, now it's finally gonna break out of this channel. No, we're gonna go and bring it right back down. It's crazy, man. Going back to you, my friend. What are you looking at there? I'm looking at EOSC. I'm I'm upset that I'm not in this. Noel was even here this morning. I'm pretty sure. I this thing has been strong. The problem with this now is that I feel like buying this, I'm chasing, and I just don't yeah. want to do that. I just don't yeah. want to do that. But th this was a nice move right out of the gate here. I'd look for a reload down back to three, right? And so yeah. um, that's the kind of move that I'd look for, a move slight bit below threes now, yep. and then look to see big volume come in as it comes through the two, like three to 290 area. So that's what I would be watching now. And, and then the, I look at the VWAP five minutes at 294, and so somewhere between 294, 290s, I'd look for that volume to come in through the threes as it starts to fill and pull back. That's the only way I could come out at EOS. Yeah, that's out. what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> EOS is giving me a rash. Um, <laughs> I don't know of any good rash, so I'm assuming that that's bad. Yeah, I have, I have yet to have a good rash. <laughs> Palantir, yeah, it's a nice little pull off the uh, 1526. Microsoft pulling back here. It might give me a chance to add. I don't mind it. I'm just going to keep watching the queues. We'll see what happens there. NVIDIA did try to get back above the VWAP. Went to 440 uh, 50s, but nice rejection there. That's actually looking a little bit better. Of course, 440s get tapped. It bounced there just recently at 440.09. Let's see if it takes out the 440 spot. That's one area that I'd be watching to see if NVIDIA holds today. I'll show you guys that right now. And it went to the, right there on the kisser on that little expansion, 440.09. We just recently went to 440.40s. I'm watching to see if it breaks that 440. Microsoft's still decent in the green for me. I can add down here, but I'm just waiting. Let's see if it keeps going. Let's go to Penn. Penn is still holding a little around that 24 spot. Back down through the lows today, and I'll be out of that. See what happens there. DCTH back up to six here. AAL on the pullback. Can industrials get back into the green? Industrials are, aren't doing too bad here. I'm focusing on industrials to see what happens there. Some big names getting a lift again. Cat. Boeing. Deer getting a little bit of a nice little push. Did Deer get to 420s yet, man? Just doesn't want to get down there. RTX, Honeywell, nah, those don't look that good. ADP doesn't look that bad, but I don't, I don't trade this ever, pretty much. The chart itself looks good. I'm looking around, team. You guys see anything? Let me know. Yeah, the only thing I see right here is DCTH on another attempt through six here. We'll see if it goes, though. It's been unable to do it so far, so we'll see. IDAI kind of disappointing here, really kind of drifting back below the VWAP now. If we get another volume pop in here, this could go higher, but was expecting more out of this. Yeah, VCTH pulling back now. Trying to get back Not to yet. the green now. BFS trying to get back to the green. If Tesla can stay green, I wouldn't mind that kind of play. Kind of go for a smaller name, right? Just got to be careful, like always. Whenever you're playing SPACs or do stocks, you're always going to have to be a little bit more careful. All right, guys, like always, have a good one, Mystery. If you're already green, take it and run, man. Cooler has earnings tonight, Explodus Maximus. Awesome handle, by the way. Cooler having earnings tonight. Remember, I'm in some lotto calls for that. No stock exposure. If the calls go to zero, no big deal. We have Cisco tonight. We'll be counting AI and we'll have an update tomorrow morning. There we go. Apple holding well. I think that's a good indicator also to be watching today. Apple's doing pretty decent here. And I've talked about that 177 level, how it makes sense for traders to keep trading off of that level. We'll see if it keeps pushing and gets back towards 179 today. Microsoft right back closer towards VWAP. It still hasn't gotten to the 321s, but pretty close towards my entry. I could add really close towards my entry here, but I don't want to add until it actually gets to VWAP because I want some people reloading at VWAP. 
DCTH back up to six here. Come on, take this out. This is this is just getting annoying now. This is one, two, three, four candles that have run up into this and finding resistance. We just need that volume pop. Just need that volume pop, and this goes. Ah, wisdom. Really sorry to hear that trading from Maui today, but uh, at least uh, you're on the island supporting, uh, I'm sure. I'm just kind of really uh, upset, too. I haven't gone to, to Maui yet, and it's definitely one of my bucket list kind of places. Yeah, Hawaii is really cool. I'll never forget my first trip to Hawaii. I was 14, I believe, 14 year old boy. And I got off the plane, and some woman in a hula dress put a lei around my neck is the first thing that happened in Hawaii. I was like, this place is cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you were ready, man. I was ready. Chilling. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm ready to drink some salt water and try to go surfing over there. So I, I'm not ready to drink salt water, Mitch. No. I mean, it just, it just comes with the game, I guess, you know. You surf a little bit. Trust me. You're going to drink some water. <laughs> yeah, I don't surf. So that makes sense. Yeah, he'll drink some water, man. That's for sure. All right, here's a little pullback. Going to look to see if the cues come right back up here. They're right on the VWAP. So seems like a little bit of a battle type of day for right now. A little bit of mixed signals all around. That's TJX doing today. That's trying to bounce a little bit. That had earnings today. Ross Store is looking decent. I had that one a little while ago, but I didn't want to go and play into the earnings. Ross Store is actually reports earnings, I think, tonight. Kava below 47. Yeah, that's actually interesting. It popped on the earnings. It had decent earnings, but it's getting flushed on the price action at the open. That's hard. That's hard to go through, right? Because like, even if you were really bullish on Kava today and you see that first hour, it's hard to hold through that hourly candle, right? We'll see if it comes back today, but hard red candle. And I've been wrong on Kava, guys. I thought it would go down really quickly on the daily. And it did have a nice little pop on the earnings today. We'll see at the end of the day. If this looks like a bearish engulfing candle, or does it look like it comes right back? That's why daily candles are important. And I think it's also important that uh, traders sometimes learn to take a look at the daily candle and see how that sets up look. Because if it's going to set up to look really good for the next couple of days, or it makes traders overall on the daily think of the stock as bullish, that's one thing that I want to catch. All right, let's look around. Uh, let's see if Microsoft can get that bounce here. Killing the green with it. There you go. It's starting to take off. Starting to get that nice little lift there. Now I can look at Oracle. That doesn't look too bad off the 117 here. I don't mind it at all, at least for the day trade. Doesn't look too bad off that 117. Don't want to get too heavy tech until I actually see the takeoff. We'll see what happens here. TSM slightly up today. Will NVIDIA get back into the green? I'm watching that. Or will it take out the 440s on the downside? It's going down, down, down. We'll see what happens. There's In an earlier round? Attempt. It's the 440 attempt. It's down on the bid side to 439.76. Looking like it wants lower. We'll see if it gets uh, lower or does it create a big wick here and recovers 440. Q's is hanging out on that VWAP. So TQQQ is going to look the very similar, right? Um, what's the TQQQ? We always talk about the SQQQ, right? I think we don't do too much talking about the TQQQ. Of course, you're talking now kind of more the opposite. That's it. It's just the opposite. Now, if you want to go to the pro side or the short side, right? I mean, we'll see. 
And they're going to look very similar, right? I mean, look at the SQQQ. It looks just like a reversal candle, right? We'll see if this just VWAP fades right back down the 1940s. Uh, DCTH coming back to the VWAP here. Big breakdown. Ah, what a bummer. What a bummer. Lots of wicks at that six. Lots Seems of them, dude. Seems like there's a seller there that there is, is and and, and they're trying it. to hit them. They're trying to hit them too. That's the other thing. They're they're actually trying to take it out, but they just don't have the strength yet. But we'll see after this pull now. It's got it. That's outside. I hear something, but it's outside. You still got more active buyers in here. That doesn't look too bad on DCTH. Yeah, that price target. <laughs> I'm sure that got it going today. BTIG with a target price target of 20 on this thing, Ryan. 20? Say again. It, uh, there's a BTIG maintained buy on this company and raised the price target to 20. Okay. Okay. Right. I mean, I I'm mean, just looking, I'm just looking for a bounce off the VWAP here, frankly. Right, like twenty. Like, he I wants mean, to go to twenty, like cool, but it doesn't need to in order for <laughs> in order for me to be happy. Uh, Mitch got me on a small account challenge again. It takes works. It takes a lot of patience, I would say, especially. So wisdom, stay patient out there, man, and uh, continue to love the folks. Enjoy the island. Um, be there for them, like always. I I hope you're being there. I know we wish we could be there. So hey, take care of them out there, wisdom. For, for all of us, especially. DCTH there, we'll see if it wants to make that move today. Um, uh, I'm looking yeah, at I MDT, and that's pulling back a little bit. So I'm looking to see like if the leaders in that space want to go green today. Medical devices now pulling a little bit back. So I'd look to see this go green first. So uh, that's just my outlook, though. Because I want to see certain sectors and things trade green if I'm really trading that way, right? And right now, I'm just not seeing it. Even my Microsoft position starting to get into a little bit of red here, but it's close to that one 321 ad that I was looking at. So I'm probably going to add right here on a little bit of a pullback and then look for the rip to the upside. I'll take my shot, right? Wiss, that was Fallout Boy, not Green Day. LOL. I was going to say there's some uh, there's a note out from uh, Adam Crisofoli over at Vital Knowledge, just basically uh, ranking what is causing all the negativity. And I thought it's worth interesting. And he ranks one through ten. Um, the hierarchy of investor concerns. And number one is the disinflation process. Um, it, it goes to show that disinflation is happening. But take a look at two different commodities. Corn, I posted this last night on Twitter. The bar chart highlighted corn is at its lowest levels, I think, since December 2020. That's disinflation. Where gas prices are near 389, that's not disinflation. It just goes to show there's some commodities that are disinflating and there's some are not. Number two, because inflation is reaccelerating. We have highlighted that here on this program multiple times, saying commodities are spiking. We saw a little bit of, a, of inflation reacceleration in the last CPI accelerating year over year two tenths, but it goes to show that reacceleration is putting a pressure on stocks and uh, traders and investors are putting that as a concern. All right. I showed a couple of charts there that you guys can take a look at. You can take a look at corn, wheat, soybean. Those are the two Korean funds um, and those are ETFs, but you guys can check those out. All right, here's Microsoft. I did set up an order to add there right below where it was at, at 321s, and it didn't even go there. It just bounced already. Um, so I could add to this up here, but I'm not going to chase it since it would just bounced off my break-even spot. I'm just going to hold break-even now and just let this try to rip to the upside. 
This is looking pretty good here. Of course, I'm on the one minute. I'm a little bit kind of focused on this position. Now I'm going to look to see if the Qs can make that up move and Apple make the up move. I really like Apple too, so I'm willing to take a little bit of a shot here. It already went to VWAP, so I don't mind taking a little bit of a kind of a little bit of a chase here, but just give myself enough room, right? I'm going to take a little bit here at seven one seventy seven eighty fives. I got filled there, and so I'm getting a little bit of a starter here, kind of the similar way that I went off in Microsoft, where I get the starter here and I'll look to add back down towards the VWAP. But now I'm going to look to see if the queues take off. And I have two big names here to see them go green. Google's another nice little setup chart because it goes red to green here off the VWAP. We'll see what happens on that. And can NVIDIA just come back? That You see how it came back to this 440 and big wick there at the 440s? That's what kind of what I was looking for. I talked about that even five minutes ago. Would we cut through 440s and then make a big wick there? It's exactly what we did. Now I want to see that hold and get back up to 446 on the upside outlook. Sock sells, something I could think about playing here, TQQQ. Um, if you guys are looking for plays, maybe you're looking to see some tech plays go back into the green. Uh, Meta is right off the VWAP right now. Tesla has been strong all day, so I'm gonna look for that just to stay strong and continue going to the upside. Amazon was weak earlier, now turning to flip to the upside. So at least the big boys are starting to make a move. Spy has been, Pretty decently strong. It had a first move to 444. Let's see if it makes a move back through that level. And make sure that financials don't just kind of ruin this game. That's what ruined it yesterday. But even them, they're like kind of getting dragged a little bit, but they're not doing much right now. Uh, JPM not going down too much here. Bank of America, that's a leap there. I'll tell you that much. Um, but it, it's a little bit of a mixed signal right now in the banks. They're still leaking some. All right, let's keep it going, guys. We're yeah. going to go until 10.30 today, so we got about 22 minutes left to go. Let's keep pushing, guys. Smash up those likes. I'm going to check where we're at on the like game. Can we get to 200 already? You guys smash it up out there. Uh, DCTH continues to break down. That needs to set up again. That's that's done for today, at least for right now. Uh, let's see what else. I All I see is penny stocks. Here's Kano popping uh dlo has been printing new highs i guess this one's moving to not in that though yep dlo grats if you took that nice gap and go you're right jan there's a nice gap and go on dlo and the pullback to the vwap here and the move higher really encouraging all right nice move there already in apple i want to see it take out the 178 and just really start pushing to the upside reversal off the 177 today and so i could just go off that 177 on the daily for the swing um and i'm just looking for a little bit of a push higher i'm not looking for breakouts to the upside i'm just trying to play some kind of play here and i don't mind going after this microsoft reversal look at that nice look not looking bad now on the one minute see it on the all five penny here. stocks that I, all i see is penny stocks on my scanner really disappointing I'm, look, I'm looking for this to continue to 423s and continue on microsoft now back up towards this trend line here 423 50s uh 324s is where i'm going to look to take majority of it out today and we'll see if it can continue to climb there but not a bad little trade here on microsoft i don't mind taking some profits today and then leaving the rest for a swing if it wants to come back towards like 328s. You still in pen? Yeah, I'm still in pen and I have it already with a stop set. So I, I just set the stop and I just said, you know what? I'm not going to watch it. If it stops me out, it stops me out. If it doesn't, I'll, I'll still be in it. And if the market starts to come up here, maybe it can hold this 2390s. Let's see if I'm still, yep, still in it now. I have a, a 2384 average cost. And have the trade and the stop set there for a, I'll tell you the exact, it's three, a 23.89 trigger spot with a limit at 20, 24.85. So it got close there, but it didn't get it. Kano? Yeah, it's this. There was a huge pop up to 55, then it came all the way back down, and now they're retracing the stick. Hmm. Microsoft, nice move there, guys. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. Did I just call the nice reversal in Microsoft today? 
I'll take my shot. Let's go. 423 is almost. Will Apple take off here? There it is. Nice. Q's going with a nice little push there as the market gets strong back to tech today. And that's just how it goes sometimes, guys. You think that you have one side of the coin. And, of course, the market likes to show you the other side of the coin. So you got to be careful out there. But there's one thing that I'll say is just, just hang out right here, guys. Uh, I, I have a tendency of just trying to call it how I see it. And today it was kind of just a little bit of a flip. And sometimes it's going to be like that psychology, psychology, psychology. Yesterday was the psychology of actually seeing these bulls get caught. Now they go up. And that's what I was talking about on NVIDIA on the pre-market prep, how the hourly candle on NVIDIA actually held yesterday, which could be signs of bigger traders trading off that 440 and looking for it to go back to the upside. So I'd be careful if this gets back above, like, let's say 450s, because that could really start getting it to push. Right now, it's just trying to get back, 442s. But by the end of the day, it's at 450s. Yeah, I would be careful um, because this is this stock's a dragon, right? It's like Tesla. When we short it, we want to see it go in our favor real quick because when it comes back against us, it has a tendency of doing big green bars like Tesla does. Um, so whenever I'm shorting the dragons, I, I try to be quick in, in and out, in and out, in and out. I have shorted NVIDIA in this time that it's gone down, but only once. And it was from uh, 345 to literally the next day at the open. And as soon as that the opening had a little bit of downside, I took my money, I took my money and ran. What do you think about the bar for NVIDIA? Is it set too high, too low for when they report earnings next week? It's set too high. But the only thing here that can happen, though, is that a lot of people believe that bar. And so that's the problem there, right? Is that the bar is set high as hell. Let's be honest. But you, you keep seeing more and more mentions of them getting orders. I saw, what was it? Was it Saudi Arabia that was buying NVIDIA chips uh, the other day? Yeah. yeah. Nick. And so things like this, yes. right? Those kind of mentions are very important. Very important. They go a, a little bit unsaid. And there's a reason why. Because analysts and money people with actual money, I feel like hear those types of things and they almost don't talk about them because they want to trade them versus talking about them. Um, so just be careful on that. And that's why I, I do like that NVIDIA is eventually a short, but the truth is you're shorting a dragon. It's like shorting a momentum name to the upside. You have to be dead right and be careful because you can really get torn. What's just going like on with JB Hunt? A little one. What's going JB on with JB Hunt? Hunt? Let's take a look. We'll take a look there. Um, you see an action there? Yeah. All right. Let me take a look. I can't even see your screen. It could be my computer, but plunging. What's going on here? Woo -hoo -hoo. Did they do another Nikola deal? Well, I'm wondering if I want to buy this pullback. I don't know, man. I got to look around. We're looking around, guys. Anybody know why JB Hunt around. is down? It definitely took a smack. And what I would do here is I look at. What, what do I do here? There's, I, lo there's I look at the industry. Speaking at a conference. Okay. Thank you. So we're they talking be, integrated yeah. and shipping. Right? So let's, let's find integrated and shipping. Let's go to the top here and see if it's affecting multiple companies. Look at UPS. Look at FedEx. Leak a little bit here. And so I'm going to look to see if this affects multiple companies to see if it's a bigger deal, right? Is this an industry-wide move? And so I'm just going through the stocks in the industry to see how they're reacting off of this news. So JB Hunt now starting to already bounce back. That actually I'm trying, like I'm a trying to get chart. filled on some. God bless it. UPS pulling back significantly there. That didn't hold the VWAP. I think I'd like to see if FedEx goes back to the 267 on the upside. That might help JB Hunt get back here, but definitely a, they're a speaking hit there at a joint to Hunt. transportation conference. Yeah. About a potential sale, right? Um, I don't see that, but I just know that they're speaking at a Deutsche Bank conference. Let me see if I can get in on the conference and see if I can hear what's going on. Cut. All right. Apple going higher, guys. Looking good on that tech trade here as they start to push. I'm glad I just went for it on Apple, and now I'm really pushing on Microsoft. Now 323s already, guys. 323.18s. Looking for that 324 move. Can I get it? 
even up there towards 323.80 is going to be looking pretty good for me to take some profits already in Microsoft today. Taking a reversal on the tech trade today and not a bad outlook here overall. Seeing a couple of tech stocks really starting to push. Look for the ARKK names to now start getting the lift. If anything, maybe even ARKK itself. Um, so it could be turning into a risk on type of day. Tesla going higher here. PD Square pulling back to the VWAP. That's been really beaten down as of late for the day trade. I don't mind it a little bit here. We'll see what happens. How's Coin doing today? I know Coin got some decent news. It's pulled back and gone red. Will it go red to green here? Let's see. Let's see how the hourly looks here. I like how the hourly is pulling back off of that 90 in May. I'd wanted to recover that first before I'd, I'd like jump after it. But looking for kind of where I can risk my levels off of about 80, 40s. Um, doesn't look too bad there. Recovery of the nine EMA, 81.10. So 81.10 and holding back through 82s is what I'd want to see first. Hold 81, get back through 82s, and you can maybe turn this red to green. Ah, I got stopped out on Gilead, Wally. I talked about it earlier. I just got stopped out the gates, and look how it reacts. This is how it goes sometimes, right, Ryan? It stops you out and then runs without you. That's just, that's the worst. One of the worst. Uh -huh, so worse, man. And I had it at uh, 78.75 to get out. And where did it get out? 78.72 on the low of the day. So three cents off the bottom and then it rips to the upside. It happens sometimes, man. You're not always going to get it. I hope you still have it, Wally. At least if you're making some gold. Wally, Wally still has still it. Let's go. It. Hey. There you go, man. Sometimes I'm going to get out. Sometimes I'm going to get in. And another thing is I, I I look to a lot of the times, like if a position doesn't go to green, eventually I'm like, just, ah, I don't want to risk too much there. I took a hit though on it today. Not yeah, you Nick, guys what's know, going like, on you know? at this JB Hunt with this JB Hunt stock? Like what's going on at it? What are they saying at that conference? This thing is just not even bouncing. I don't know. I'm not seeing any headlines on any wires, and no one has tweeted Man. anything about this. Man, um, this might drag a uh, FedEx trade that was looking good here to, into the red. Look how this is. This was looking like a VWAP bounce two seconds ago. Like it was looking really good here for the 267 break to the upside. Now starting to get hit. I saw UPS also was green and now going into the red. That's a little bit of a dangerous outlook there in integrated shipping. So I'm starting to see this really affect the industry. Microsoft, ECTH let's go, is back baby. Six. <laughs> let's go, Microsoft. Oh, we ain't looking too bad here, baby. One more little rip. I'm going to take a good amount off. Probably take 50%. All right, order out to sell some here at 323.90s. If I get one more little spike up through that 60s, I'm going to look to take some out at 90s for the push for the 324. And then I think we could get a little bit of a pullback. So I'm going to try to take a good piece out there and I can come back. All right, Ryan, I uh, got the rug pulled on him. He talked too much about JB Hunt and they sent him hunting uh, somewhere else. Someone came out and hunted Ryan. Because somehow he disappeared in the stream. I was waiting for that one. <laughs> oh, Mitch, I'm going to miss he this. You got JB hunted, cool. man. I'm going to miss this. <laughs> you know where you're at, Nick. I know you'll be missing this in school. You'll be like, man, I'd much rather have been on live trading today than in uh, second hour or second period. But hey. uh, yes, <laughs> that's how it goes, man. Dang, they really got to Ryan, man. Ryan lost his lives, man. He got game over on his screen. All right, we'll see what else is going on. You guys out there, DCTH. Oh, yeah, he was talking about that. Let me go to it. We got a little pop there. It went close to my exit there. It went to 323.74 right into my trend line there on Microsoft. 
structure. I just take the money out here is where I'm fighting myself because I don't want to go through a full pullback to 322s here. Mm, canceling my order for now. Might have to take it right here off the bid. I'm going to give it one more shot here and hold the 90 MA. So 90 MA pullbacks. Like I always talk about that light blue line. And I talk about this all the time. Like a lot of traders, like we were even talking about this on pre-market prep. Some traders, let's just say, don't believe it as much as I do. <laughs> you know how that one goes, Nick. Uh, but hey, uh, I, I just call it how I see it, right? I love the 90 EMA. I love that light blue line. I look forward to hold my momentum. So as long as that can hold right now, I'm feeling okay about Microsoft and just riding the trend. And that can help me in a moment like this where I'm getting antsy about taking rewards. I just say, okay, where's the 90 MA? 323, 22s. If it breaks that, I just take the profits. If it goes above, I can ride the trend higher. And that 90 MA gets closer to the price action as it keeps climbing. It gets closer and closer and closer. Now, what is it? It's 323, 30s on the one minute. And so I'm just climbing the trend with it and trying to ride it. Wisdom says, I love the 90 MA. It's my go-to, simple and effective. That's all you need, right, sometimes. And why I think the 90 MA works so much, I've talked about it in the past. And right here on this pop, I want to take some profits. So let me just focus in here, guys. See if I can get it. 380s, 320, 380s, 75 on the bid. All right, it's stopping right here. So I'm going to take half out right there. Just took out half there. Going to celebrate a nice little profit there for Microsoft. Now look for this to keep going. And then I can also just keep watching Apple as break even. Um, this could keep going through the 24s, 324s, but I'm not going to also battle as it's getting into a little bit of a trend line outlook here for me. And this is a reversal off the daily. So I'm just looking to see if we can get back into these kind of highs, the 324s, 325s now, get back to the 9 EMA on the daily. Anything above closing above 9 EMA today on Microsoft would be a real bullish reversal from that 320 action. So now I can just let the rest of this work on a swing trade and yeah, we took some profits on the day trade, but that gives me the ability now to go break even and just let the trade work for the rest of the day. And that's what I'm really all about. And that's why they call me Money Mitch, baby. Here comes the money. Here we go. Show Let's me the money. go. Show me it. Money, 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 money. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. It's all about the dollar bills here, man, at the end of the day. You know, we try to show you guys profits, but at the end of the day, I don't make that money. Dollar, dollar bills. All right, let's get after it, team. What else can we find in the market? Definitely hasn't been a bad day for me. And a good reversal action, right? I mean, there's Pendo, Penny Pen, come on. Penny pen blew through my limit so bad that I got to go ahead and adjust it here. Not a good outlook there. Probably get out here at the 80. Trying to get out here. Oh, I get, it did get out there. All right, all right spot. Still got pen here. I'm trying to get out. Penny pen. I'm trying to manage here, guys. You guys are literally seeing me do this live. It blew through my stop limit, and so I have to adjust here. But let's do right underneath this 75s. Still haven't even put it in here, so I'm just watching it. I'll just do two cents below it right now. We're already there.
all right, orders out there if I need to get out on pen. Boom, right there. Just as simple as that. Smack, smack. All right there, guys. Get out on pen there. And I actually took a little bit of a hit there. Shouldn't be taking a hit, but hey, that's how easy it could wipe out through that level. And it wiped out through my levels and didn't get me the fill on my stop. And that's just how it goes sometimes. But hey, at least we have some green out there. Pen not working out. And like I said, sometimes it's just not going to work out here. So does it mean that the pen trade never comes back? No, I think this is going to come back. And so I'm going to get out and take the little hit here and look to get back in just at a later period in the month. So closer towards September is where I'll be looking for on pen. Maybe give it about a week or two from here. And then I'll be watching to see if it comes back through 25. That's when I'll play it the next time. I won't let it, I won't let myself jump into it early. I'll look for the brew move back above the 25. You know it, you know it, wisdom. You enjoy that out there, my friend. Especially in Hawaii, right? Hey, what can I say? Smoke weed every day. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where'd that come from? That even caught Nick's attention. Oh, boy. <laughs> Someone send some help. Someone send some help. What? No, what I really want to check on is my man, Ryan. What happened to Ryan? He says his, his internet died. Dude, this is what happens. JB Hunt hunted him, man. Good Lord. They got he my got man. Hunted. <laughs> hey, you got to be careful out there. You got to be careful. No, God, please, no. <laughs> No, no, I hope he wasn't in DCTH there. I hope he didn't get into DCTH and then his internet hit because I that would have been me and the computer would have been out the window. <laughs> you saw the, the Vegas guy that was throwing out the TVs and stuff. Yes, yes, <laughs> there you go, Nick. That would have been it. <laughs> Just would have seen the computer. Shoo. All right, guys, that's going to do it for us. We're going to slowly wrap up here at 1030, guys. I need to get over into a meeting at 1030, so I'm just going to start to wrap it up here. I still got Apple. Um, it is pulling back on me. I will let you guys know that Apple has pulled back a substantial amount now, and I'm just going to wait to see what happens here off the VWAP. Um, the Qs made a nice little move, and they, they went up, but they pulled back. Same thing for Microsoft. Like I thought it would pull back a little bit off of that trend line. It pulled right off of that trend line. Now I want to see it come like right back up through 324s. I don't want it to even break VWAP today. I just want it to keep riding higher. We'll see if that happens. If that can happen, I think you continue to see tech kind of rebound today. We will see what happens in the market. Like always, stay tuned. We'll be bringing as much as we can for you guys right here. None other than Benzinga. Nick Brown, thank you for joining me. Having a good time like always. I'm going to miss you next week, man. Uh, I, I definitely think I'm going to miss you on, on this show for sure. So it's yes. been good to have you. And uh, hey, we all got to go back to school and, and learn a little bit, but it's definitely been Still got fun four to shows left. Let's not rush it. Still got four yeah, shows yeah. left. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah, it's been a good one, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it today. We will be back like always, guys. Boom shakalaka. Boom shakalaka. I'll see you guys like always on Start Swing Trade later today. That starts at 3.30 if you guys want to check out on this Microsoft, this technology talk, what happens in the market today, can energy bounce, the banks. There's a lot to talk about, right? Well, stay tuned for that. That's a start swing trade later today. Hit the like button. And like always, we'll be right here for you guys, right here on live trading. Don't go anywhere, team. And keep smashing that like button. Support us as we support you guys.